Uh, hi, I'm David. I'm the archivist at Bethnal Museum of the Mind, which means I'm also the archivist for the South London and Maudsley NHS Foundation Trust. We're looking at a series of items that tell us a bit about the history of the Maudsley to celebrate the Maudsley's 100th anniversary. And the items we're looking at in this video um, look at the period of time just after the Second World War when the Maudsley comes into partnership with Bethlehem Royal Hospital. So the dominant character in the Maudsley after the Second World War period is a man called Aubrey Lewis. He had served as Edward Mapotha's deputy in the 1930s, but after the Second World War, Mapotha sadly dies quite young in 1940, uh, Lewis takes on control of the Maudsley Hospital himself. And this is a really important time for the Maudsley Hospital. Um, it comes into the NHS uh, as a free to enter public entity and it also partners up with Bethlehem to come in to the NHS and part of the reason for that is the Maudsley at this time thanks to the in particular the German emigres into the Maudsley has become one of the big names of British psychiatry it's got a really big reputation Bethlehem on the other hand has been out in Beckenham now for 18 years nearly two decades and it has while it's sort of rather a little bit of a backwater in terms of psychiatry, it is run through a series of funds that it's developed over the years. So the Maudsley has the reputation, Bethlehem has the money. Now the money can't be spent on the NHS, on NHS treatment, that's not in the deal. But what it can be spent on are the training schools that both Bethlehem and the Maudsley have developed. And these two schools are brought together as one and are instituted in 1949 as the Institute of Psychiatry, which is the predecessor to the IOPPN that we know today. Um, now, this institution has gone from strength to strength today, but back then it was basically very much part of the Maudsley Hospital, um, though it has perhaps separate staff by name. Many of the doctors who worked in the Maudsley in the morning would have switched hats and just worked in the institute in the afternoon. Uh, many of the people that they were lecturing to would have gone on, accompanied them on rounds throughout the hospital. So it's a very closely linked institution, probably even closer linked than it is today. But it's a really important step that the Maudsley is able to bring this together and it furthers the Maudsley's goal of establishing a sort of really um, far-sighted, far-seeing uh, training centre for British psychiatrists and British psychiatry, which has obviously been expanded as the Institute has grown bigger and more important as it's gone on. It's very much adhering to the initial goals of the Maudsley to be that centre of excellence for training. The other really important figure at this time in the Maudsley's history is Mrs Mary Ormerod, who was the administrator who ran the Maudsley in the back end of the Second World War period, um, but then goes on to be head of the central hos of the Joint Hospital, the Bethlehem and Maudsley Joint Hospital. Mrs Ormerod is actually the first person in the Bethlehem boardroom, the first lady in the Bethlehem boardroom of any sort, but she on her shield in the boardroom, which commemorates people who ran Bethlehem Hospital, she has created this really unique shield, which is the coat of arms of Bethlehem, but with this pick in the middle, and the pick represents the Maudsley. So she was very much about bringing Bethlehem and the Maudsley together, not as favouring one over the other, as we think Aubrey Lewis probably hoped she would do, um, but about bringing the two institutions together and getting them working together. And it's actually Mrs Ormerod's role as a sort of being in charge of both sides together that sets up a working relationship between what was two very separate hospitals.